Coming up on State of Events, Bay Area schools are in high alert after a shocking email was sent to multiple school districts. And a man was arrested after a violent incident on BART. State of Events starts now. And welcome to State of Events. I'm Gabby Gebhardt. And I'm Tyler McKinney. Let's get into our top stories. A threatening email was sent to multiple Bay Area school districts yesterday stating that a planned violent attack was going to take place at a number of schools. There was no information in this email about where or when the violence would occur, but the exact same email was sent to six different school districts in the Bay Area. Law enforcement was immediately notified and began looking into the incident. Authorities later confirmed that the threat was a mass email hoax appearing to be from an international group. The schools are on high alert and are being asked to report anything else that looks a little bit out of the ordinary. Ordinary. This threat went out to as many as 46 states and is something to take seriously after the recent shootings. And the most recent shooting that happened at the San Bruno YouTube headquarters is causing tech companies to rethink community style campuses. While large companies like Google and YouTube have armed security, the open campus-like structures make the buildings easily accessible to anyone. At the San Bruno campus, employees and visitors wander freely, and security guards typically stay behind their desks inside the buildings. The YouTube campus, like many other modern tech campuses, look a lot like a college, very open. The San Bruno YouTube shooting that injured three people is causing current security measures to be questioned. It's creating concern about protection in large open company buildings. YouTube is in the process of increasing security at all offices worldwide to make them more secure long term. 32-year-old Robert Dolph of San Francisco was arrested for attempted murder charges following a stabbing at Oakland Bart Coliseum Station around 2 p.m. Saturday afternoon. The victims are a 60-year-old woman and her brother who is in his 50s. Dolph boarded the train at Civic Center Station and was behaving in a violent manner. According to BART chief Lance Haight, when the two victims exited the train at Coliseum stop, Dole followed them, pulled out a knife, and began stabbing the siblings for an unknown motive. A bystander came to the rescue and pulled the knife from Dolph and held him down until he was handcuffed. The victims were rushed to the hospital and Dolph was booked into Santa Rita Jail in Dublin. And if you are a Bay Area driver, you know traffic can be a struggle. Bay Area voters will decide which issue is more problematic, sitting in traffic or paying up to $9 to cross the bridge. The Bay Area Toll Authority voted to place a $3 increase on the June ballot for nine Bay Area counties. If it passes, the tolls on all of the bridges except the Golden Gate will rise by $1 beginning January 1, 2019, with another increase of a dollar in 2022-2025. This means the cost of all bridge tolls would be $8, with the Bay Bridge at $9 in peak hours. However, the Golden Gate Bridge is not state-owned, so it will not be affected at this time. The toll hikes are supposed to provide mega bucks over 25 years to complete projects all over the Bay Area. Stay tuned. A new pilot program aims to keep Barton Muni elevators clean. State of Events reporter Ronnie Kunzervong has a story. Ronnie? BART might look the same, but it won't be smelling the same. The San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency approved a new program to keep the elevators clean. Staff will stand around and in the elevators to stop people from urinating and defecating in them. They will monitor it every day from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. It's a long-standing problem for both people with disabilities and the homeless. Reactions are mixed. Residents like Jennifer Edwards thinks SFMTA needs to think of something more long-term that benefits everyone. They should get them some restrooms, the homeless people, and that they should give them, um, um, I don't know, a time frame, a time limit to be in there and be out of there. Like, And they shouldn't hold up the elevator to shoot drugs because it's not right. Now the project starts later this month, Monday through Thursday. They'll have trials here at Powell and also have stops at Civic Center. And if successful, SFMTA bought additional attendees at other stops. Reporting in San Francisco, I'm Verani Kuntervong for State of Events. Thanks, Verani. A swirling pile of trash in the Pacific Ocean is rapidly growing three times the size of France. Lauren G uncovers the plastic problem that surfaces the water. Lauren? 
Every year, 8 million tons of trash piles into the Pacific. One of the largest trash vortexes, known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, located in the central North Pacific Ocean, is now twice the size of Texas, or three times the size of France. It is 16 times larger than what researchers expected according to a newly published scientific report. There are actually two Great Pacific Garbage Patches, it turns out. One is between here and Hawaii, and the other is a little south and east of Japan. And they're both uh, kind of vortices in ocean currents where plastics have accumulated over the last quite a few years. Though we cannot see the trash vortex from the bay, the impacts of the debris are greater than people perceive, and we humans are the problem. We humans contribute 100% because plastic doesn't occur in nature. So. At the rate that we as a society are creating garbage, the United Nations projected that by 2050 there will be as much plastic as there are fish in the ocean by weight. Professor of Geography Jennifer Blecka teaches a course on the geography of garbage and agreed to talk trash with me. Well, plastic in the ocean is a big problem and plastic doesn't go away because plastic isn't biodegradable. And every day more plastic is going into the ocean and there's no way for it to exit. She addresses a misconception that removing plastic from the ocean is not as simple as it seems. But really the plastic in the ocean is more like soup. You can't just pick it up. Like it's not, you can't walk across it, you can't stand on it, it's not an island. It's plastic that's broken into many pieces and it's all through the water column. Preventing plastics from going into the ocean is the best solution. So instead of using these one-time plastics, why don't we switch to reusable ones? Thanks for that, Lauren. And heavy rainfall over the weekend caused one of the main parking lots at Stinson Beach to collapse. A creek that usually runs underneath the parking lot rinsed away the area where visitors park. There was very limited parking to start with. Up to six and a half to seven inches of rainfall are to blame. According to ABC7 News, over 40 parking spaces were destroyed due to flooding. Visitors were most concerned about reaching the shore. A mess of concrete, picnic tables, and debris are all that remains. A date for restoring and repairing the parking lot has not yet been determined by the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. GGRNA will continue to evaluate the damages. Next on State of Events, the Trump administration is speaking out on the recent attacks on Syrian refugees. And Facebook has its back against the wall as the social media company prepares to alert users about their privacy. More news after the break. Facebook might be facing millions of dollars in fines. A political consulting firm is being accused of passing along Facebook user data. A former employee of, of the firm says that the data gathered could have potentially come from more than 87 million Facebook users. Alerts were sent out to users yesterday to view any connected apps and information shared. If you are someone who's gotten the alert, you have the opportunity to delete these apps to stop more information from being collected. Facebook says that users did allow the app to collect data, but rules were then broken when their personal data was passed along. Mark Zuckerberg, co-founder of Facebook, apologizes for not preventing this from happening. He is set to appear before a Senate committee this afternoon. And Facebook continues to make headlines for its security and privacy issues. Now it seems the company is trying its hardest to make up for all the damages it may have caused. State of Events reporter Sarah Sullivan is in studio to talk about the latest Facebook news update and this week's BizTech Roundup. Thanks, Gabby. Tesla and Apple are the latest companies that are beginning to hit a dark place with their, 
with their products. But taking the gold for most controversial company this week is Facebook. From scanning personal image messaging to Russia meddling, Facebook continues to make users question their privacy on the social media website. I think we can easily say that Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has a lot on his plate at the moment. Last week, it was revealed that the social media website exposed approximately 87 million users' data without their consent. Each of these users' information was leaked to a political analysis firm called Cambridge Analytica. The firm was also linked to President Trump's campaign during the 2016 election and used the data to build psychological profiles ahead of the election. Zuckerberg apologized for the incident and promised to alert the 87 million users if their information was leaked. After a major autopilot crash involving a Tesla X vehicle and the death of the driver, self-driving cars are continuing to force customers to question the safety of autopilot features. Now, tech specialists are starting to notice the similarities between the recent Tesla crash and one that took place back in September. They believe that the issue may be coming from lane-changing difficulties from the autopilot. We'll just have to wait and see what changes Tesla can make to their vehicles next. And Apple has some mixed reviews on its latest 11.3 iOS update. The update has essential new features such as better data and privacy notifications, display of batteries health, and health records. However, users are continuing to have constant complaints of graphic glitches, inconsistent battery health reporting, and false notifications. Now users can expect an 11.31 iOS update with all the bug fixes sometime soon, which is very common after a major Apple update is released. And that's it for this week's BizTech Roundup. I'm Sarah Sullivan, back to you ladies at the desk. New psychiatric beds for the homeless are ready, but the idea of locking up the mentally ill is raising concern. Earlier this month, San Francisco Mayor Mark Farrell announced that there would be a new healing center at St. Mary's Medical Center. This is an effort to get homeless people with mental illness off city streets. Patients will be under con cons conservatorship. Excuse me. Conservatorship is giving the responsibility of someone over to someone else who can better care for them. In this case, the patients would be in the care of the San Francisco Healing Center. The beds offered are being described as lockdown psychiatric beds, and the building is seen as a jail in the eyes of civil rights lawyers and homeless advocates. The program began March 12th. And some are saying that homelessness is scaring businesses away. Businesses are shying away from settling down in San Francisco, and labor costs, high rent, lack of cleanliness, and potential health hazards are to blame. Real estate agents say they are being told that the city is filthy and they don't want to be here. Businesses initially express interest, visit the city, and then choose not to move forward. Brand representatives are appalled by the state of the streets downtown. The number of vacant shops in San Francisco has increased over the past year, and there's concern that these vacancies will have a snowball effect, impacting retailers on the same block. And in the mission, the armory is up for sale. And after more than a decade being location for porn productions, it is full of curious items that were on sale over the weekend. State of Events reporter Sara Cabarizio takes us there. Wheelchairs, human-sized hamster wheels, or dentist chairs, were for sale this weekend at the San Francisco Armory in the mission. King.com, a pornography production company, sold the property last January and now is emptying the building in a rather peculiar estate sale. San Franciscans did not let the chance to buy cheap kinky stuff pass, as Kevin, AJ, estate sale manager, explains. We had well over probably anywhere from 2,000 people during the four days. So a tremendous crowd, they were in there standing in the rain with umbrellas. On Friday, hundreds of items covered the armory's floors. But on Monday, after the weekend crowds passed, mostly everything was gone. The state sale was a success, and the armory is empty now. This is the end of an era for the property that has increased its value at 400% in these 12 years. King.com bought it in 2006 for $14.5 million. Now, this January, King.com sell it to a Chicago-based investment company for $60 million. Barry King, operations manager at King.com, knows why they decided to sell the armory. And um, uh, about a year ago, we stopped um, uh, doing production in the building. So um, we used to shoot all over the building. And we stopped that like a year ago to focus on the event space. Oh. And uh, all the preparation we did for the event space, I guess, um, uh, made it appealing to someone who wanted to buy it. This extreme increase in property price is not something new in San Francisco. 
in the mission, houses cost almost double than they did in 2006, and since the financial markets recovered from the recession in 2013, prices have only gone up in the city by the bay. In the mission, this is Sara Cabrerizo for State of Events. Thanks for that, Sarah. And San Francisco is notorious for its lack of housing opportunities, but living afloat is a game changer. Jenny Stearns, husband Bob Isaacson, and their daughter May found a new way to combat the housing crisis. Stearns Family Houseboat is one of only 20 allowed on Mission Creek. With leases lasting until the year 2055, the development is regulated by the San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission. Just like any other tenant, their family pays rent and utilities. However, they get to enjoy a beautiful sanctuary of sea life. Most outsiders question the constant rocking of waves. Ginny explains the house is anchored in cement. And a major plus, they are safe from earthquakes too. Syria is receiving backlash after the regime reportedly used a deadly chlorine gas on civilians. An emergency United Nations Security Council meeting was held, and reporter Kelly DeLeon has the story. Thank you very much. I'd like to begin by condemning the heinous attack on innocent Syrians. A few days after Trump announced he wanted to bring troops in Syria home, a suburb in eastern Ghouta was bombed. Rescue workers are saying the bombs unleashed toxic gas. Those who were brought to medical centers had breathing difficulties, bluish skin, mouth foaming, burns, and had a chlorine-like odor. Augustine Melendez is an international relations major at San Francisco State University, and he doesn't know if bringing the troops home is the best decision. If Trump were to withdraw the troops from Syria, Syria would suffer a lot. I think, honestly, I understand where he's coming from with him trying to bring everybody home, but they don't have the power to fend for themselves right now. United Nations Security Council held an emergency meeting to discuss actions to take. Whether or not they decide to take action, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley says the United States will. History will record this as the moment when the Security Council either discharged its duty or demonstrated its utter and complete failure to protect the people of Syria. Either way, the United States will respond. The reported chemical attack puts Trump in a hard position because on one hand, he wants to bring the troops home, but on the other hand, he has vowed to take care of bad actors. In San Francisco, I'm Kelly DeLeon with State of Events. And thanks for that, Kelly. Next on State of Events, we'll take a look at games between the Giants and the Dodgers, and how the two teams are preparing for another showdown. And a former Oakland Raider is behind bars again. More details after the break. I saw a sleeping bear, a grizzly bear. They were sleeping behind a tree, and I saw a real coyote. Even though the planet's spinning and you can't see it spinning. Recycle things like boxes or something. And water helps the environment so everything can we save um, the planet. live. No water fish could not live. I've been in the ocean. Or the beach. When I go to my grandma and grandpa's house, I can I walk mean, nothing would get water in our whole land. Yeah. Yeah. I'm throwing things away and using them and again. The scraps we can like make up. My future is now. 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 Is now. <laughs> Hollywood movie series dating all the way back to 1981 could be changing its main character to a woman. And one of California's biggest music festivals is coming up. State of Events reporter Jessica Mojinier is in the studio with all the details. Thank you, ladies. From movies to music, I'm going to fill you in on all that's going on in the entertainment world. First off, movies. The gender inequalities in the film industry are no secret, and seeing a woman play the lead character in a superhero movie or action flick hasn't always happened. But movies like Wonder Woman have made their mark in the film industry and are showing girls that they are strong as well. The Indiana Jones franchise could be the next. American filmmaker Steven Spielberg says that the next Indiana Jones could be a woman. 
Spielberg says that they would have to change the name from Jones to Joan and that there would be nothing wrong with that. Filming of the fifth movie will begin next year and Spielberg says that this will be Harrison Ford's last Indiana Jones. But that will definitely continue on. And that is when the director will decide to go ahead with Joan and once again lead the way, putting words about Hollywood inequality into action. And from movies to music, this weekend is the world famous music festival Coachella. Last year, Beyonce canceled since she became pregnant with twins, and of course we could all understand. But this year, she is making up for it. TMZ reported that Beyonce hired almost 100 dancers just one week before the festival. And if that means anything, I think we can all agree that she is going to go all out and give fans an unforgettable performance. And Cardi B is also set to perform at Coachella this weekend. She announced that her pregnancy on Saturday Night Live, and if you haven't noticed, she did it in a way that was similar to how Beyonce announced her first pregnancy on stage during her performance. So fans might be wondering how Cardi B being pregnant might affect Coachella. And thus far, she has only canceled one date of a festival in July, and the announcement came Monday from a festival, not from her. So the odds are pretty high at this point. And that's all I have for you today's entertainment roundup. Back to you ladies at the desk. Thanks for that, Jessica. And on Sunday evening, a shirtless and barefoot man wearing nothing other than a pair of shorts wrapped himself in an American flag and embarked on a 200-foot journey up a crane at a Hollywood construction site. The unidentified male spent around three hours at the top of the crane, peering down and shouting random phrases before safely descending down. It is unclear how he was able to access the crane and why he even climbed up in the first place. Los Angeles Police and Los Angeles Fire are to thank for safely taking the man into custody. The Giants have a doubleheader coming up in two weeks after the rain postponed the first game of the series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Reporter Karen Rios has a story. Giants right fielder McCutcheon becomes McCutcheon on Saturday after hitting the winning three-run homer on the 14th inning, defeating the Dodgers 7-5. The celebration didn't last too long when Giants lost on Sunday 2-1 against the Dodgers. Now we will have to wait two weeks for the doubleheader to see who will win the rivalry. The Giants will continue to play the Arizona Diamondbacks and San Diego Padres this week. Now we hope we didn't miss the Dodgers too much as they will be playing against our very own Oakland A's this week at the Dodgers Stadium. The A's are currently tied with the Rangers 4-7 in the All-West Division after losing the three-game series against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim 1-2. Now moving on to basketball, we have the Golden State Warriors who are currently in second place in the Western Conference behind the Houston Rockets. The Warriors did not start the weekend off strong after losing only by 6 points against the New Orleans Pelicans. The final score was 126-120. The Warriors quickly bounced back after defeating the Phoenix Suns 117-100 on Sunday. Sending out positive vibes tonight to our boys as they take on the Utah Jazz at 6 p.m. Stay tuned next week for more news on Bay Area sports. Back to you ladies at the desk. Thanks for that, Karen. And a former Oakland Raider and San Francisco 49er player Alden Smith is arrested and behind bars for the third time in two months. According to the San Francisco Sheriff's Department, Smith allegedly violated a specific regulation of his electronic monitoring while on bail. This led to his arrest. He is currently being held on $500,000 bail. He is due to be in court on April 11th at 1.30 p.m. Last month, Smith pled not guilty to a domestic violence dispute. We will continue to update you on this story. Bay Area farmers markets are having a rough time keeping dogs out. Regardless of the no pet signs posted inside and near Bay Area farmers markets, dogs are still being brought inside. Health violations are the main concern, so marketplaces like the Ferry Plaza Farmers Market is trying something new, puppy parking. Each Sunday, dog-friendly zones are set up around the market. There are metal railings to wrap leashes around and water bowls to keep the little dogs hydrated. The response to the puppy parking stations has been very positive, so positive that visitors are reminding each other to park their pups. Do you have a dog? I have a dog. You and do? I'm going to take him and we got to park him. You got to park him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for State of Events. Thanks so much for watching. And make sure you guys check out our website for more updates. And we'll see you here next week.